Hi everyone, welcome back to Life with Technologies channel and thank you for watching. So this is a continuation of our Huawei lab simulations where we are simulating how to do configuration of protocols, how to simulate, how to configure different technologies, networking technologies on Huawei routing and switching devices. And in this lab, we are going to look at how to do basic ISIS configuration and troubleshooting on Huawei routers. So we all know ISIS protocol had the concept of areas and levels. So as you can see in this network, in this topology, we have two areas. We have ISIS area 1 and ISIS area 2. Then we have uh, R1 which we will configure as level 2 and uh, R2 we configure it as level 1 2 because it's either connecting to ISIS areas then R3 and R4 will be configured as level 1. Then we have two PCs in ISIS area 2 and one PC in ISIS area 1. So the objective is to ensure we have connectivity from PC1, PC2 and PC3. So for the configuration part I've already prepared it so we'll just go through the configuration and then we can see how we can see the status, the route tables, and all the other detail that we can be able to get from this topology. So for the configuration, remember this is just basic configuration. We are not going into advanced features of ISIS. So for configuration, first we do assign a router a name. So we configure a name. First, you need to go into the configuration view. And once you are in the configuration view, you need to give a router a name. So we give it R1. Then we do ISIS configurations, just basic. So we are specifying level as level 2. Remember, R1 is in level 2. And then we specify cost style. Cost style can either be wide or narrow. It's always recommended to go with wide. And then we do configure the we set the network entity. The network entity we generate the system ID from loopback zero. So that's why we are having 0010, 0100, And then remember this is generated from loopback zero. Then we give a sys name as the IS name for its identification when we are checking the status or when we are doing troubleshooting. The next step is just to configure the interfaces and enable ISIS. So we have loopback 0, we assign an IP address, and then we enable ISIS. Remember, this is in ISIS process 1, so we'll do ISIS enable 1. Then we do same for interface gig 00 and the interface that is connecting to the PC. So we enable ISIS on all these interfaces using this command, ISIS enable 1. So similarly, on the other routers, we do the same. As you can see, this is R2. We say that we are configuring it as level 1, 2. Because it's like the ABR in OSPF. It's connecting to ISIS areas. Then same, cost style is Y. Then we generate the system ID from loopback 0 and set the network entity as shown. Then IS name, we set it to R2. Same, we do the interface configuration, just assign IP address and enable ISIS on that interface. This one we are enabling ISIS process 2. So we do same on R3 and R4. Remember this one for R4, R3 and R4, we are configuring them as level 1. So we specify level 1 as the ice level, other configuration remain the same. We are just merging there. For example, the system, this one will be R4, the other one will be R3. And then we enable ISIS on the interfaces. So I've already run the configuration. So if I log into R1 and I check the status, display ISIS peer, you can see we have a peering with R2. R2 is level 1, 2. So R1 and R2 will establish a level 2 adjacent. As you can see, type is level 2. And the status is up. If I do display ISIS interface, we can be able to check which interfaces we have ISIS running on them. 
you can see we have loopback 0, gig 0, 0, and then Ethernet 0, 0 that is connecting to the PC. I can do display ISIS route. These are the routes that we are learning via ISIS. And you can get all this detail, the IPv4 destination, internal cost, external cost, exit interface, the next hop, and the flags. I can do display ISIS LSDB, and it will give you the LSPs that are on this router. So you have LSP ID, the sequence number, the checksum, hold time, length, and other features. So this is on R1, we can check on R2, on R2 we can do the same. If I do display ISIS peer, uh, we have three peerings to R1, R4, and R3. R1 is level 2, R3 and R4, they are level 1, because R2 is level 1 too, so it will establish level 1 with level 1 routers. If I do display ISIS route, You can see in, on this router we have two. We have for level one, and then we have for level two. So we have two forwarding tables: one for level one and one for level two. Then, if I do display ISIS interface, I'll do similar details. I just see the interfaces that have ISIS enabled. And they are all level 1 to interfaces. I can do display ISIS LSDB. So we'll have also level 1 and level 2. So we have level 1 link state database and we have level 2 link state database. And you can see the LSP detail that are in each of the DB. So on R4, if I do display ISIS peer, we have R2, and R2 is the peer that we, and the type is L1, level 1. So if I display ISIS LSDB, you can see the LSPs, level 1 LSPs are generated to R2, R3, and R4. I can do display ISIS route. When we check the ISIS route, you realize that we have a default route here. Remember, this one is a level 1 router. So what a level 1 router does is it will install a default route pointing to the nearest level 1 to router. So that's why we are having a default route and it's pointing to the 20.20.20.2, which is which is router 2. So if I do display IP routing table, this is the default route and it's L1. You can see the next hop it's uh, router 2. So this is the default route that installed that is installed by a level 1 router and it points to the nearest level 1 to router and this will be used as the default route. Remember we don't have specific routes coming from level 2. If you do display IP routing table again, you realize that we don't have any any specific routes coming from from ISIS area 1. We will be using the default route to forward all our traffic. So with this in mind, if we now check, I've already configured PC1, as you can see, the basic configuration, I've just assigned a static IP, the mask, and the default gateway. So from this, we can be able to ping the gateway, that is the gateway configured on R4, and then we can also ping 2.1, it's PC. dot one is PC2, so we are able to ping PC2, and then we have 0 0.1, which is PC, PC3. We are able to communicate from 
uh, ISIS Area 1, the PCs in ISIS Area 1 to PCs in ISIS, I mean Area 1 and Area 2 are able to communicate without any challenge. And this is because we have a default route that is installed by R3 and R4 pointing to R2, that is a level 1, 2. So later we can look at how to do route leaking. Sometimes this installing of a default route by a level 1 may lead to op an optimal routing. So we look at how to do route leaking between level 2 and level 1 routers so that we have optimal routing. These routers will have the specific routes from level 2 and then it can make the best choice. It can select the best path instead of using the non-optimal path. So this is just a basic lab on how to do ISIS configuration and troubleshooting. And as you can see, our ISIS is up. Our routes are being exchanged without any challenge and we can be able to communicate from different ISIS areas in with different levels of routers in ISIS. So thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos. In our next video, we'll be looking at how to do route clicking between different ISIS levels. Thank you and please remember to subscribe to our channel. Bye.